Matt Miller. Militant Affection. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Militant Affection. I am a Matt Miller. I am recording this on July 1st. That's a little behind the scenes. Uh, it's going to come out the Sunday after July 1st. I'm burping again. Uh, All I do is burp on this motherfucker. And it's coming up on the 4th of July. Yay, America. We came to America, killed the Native Americans, and took their land from them. They all died, walk of tears, dead, 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 dead. God, I keep looking at my fucking Instagram. I'm a fucking nutcase. You know, calling them, I mean, this is, I've stolen from something, but like calling them Native Americans is crazy. We took their land from them, and then we called it America, and now we call them Native Americans. But... They never called it America. They called it whatever the fuck they did. We're, we're forcing them to be Native Americans. I'm stealing that from something, but you ever think about that? Native Americans is an offensive term. It's not the correct term. Indians is probably a better term, even though they're not Indians, right? Also, I meant to say this. Uh, if you like my podcast and iTunes, give it whatever star review you want. Write a little review and then screenshot it and DM me on Instagram, Matt Miller Real, or on Twitter, Matt Miller Real. I'll pick the first person that sends it, or someone at random, depending on when this comes out, I'll pick someone who sends me a screenshot of them doing that, and I'll send you a free shirt. I'm not, this is a shirt of me, if you're watching this on video, which you probably aren't. Maybe, I don't know. Of me drunk that my friend put on a shirt. But I'll send you a shirt of me in the tub holding a toaster, and that'll be fun. I am drinking lemonade right now. Fourth of July. One Fourth of July, back when I was a child, I used to like to watch the Real World, Real World Road Rules Challenge, and we were going to go out to fireworks that night, but I wanted to watch the Real World Road Rules Challenge, so I didn't go with the family, and I just stayed home with my dog, Maxiboy, and we watched that while I listened to the fireworks and then regretted it, and I still think about it till this day. There was another day in my family's history where everyone went out to play outside and I just didn't want to and I just stayed inside and watched TV while everyone played and then they came in and they had a fun day and I was just inside all day. I'm a weird fucking kid. I spent my life doing weird shit. I used to play a lot of video games. I don't know if I talked about this. I spent a lot of time just alone playing video games. Final Fantasy XI was my big game. Probably talked about this. I used to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I used to play this game called SOCOM. And yeah, I spent a lot of time alone. Spent a lot of time alone now in my adult life. I just finished shooting two sketches. Two, it is 1.25 a, 1.26 a.m. I have to go to work today, but we don't have anything to do today at work, so I'm just staying up late partying. I drank two bang energy drinks. Keep me up. I also drank some liquor, a little bit of liquor. I don't know why I drank liquor, just because I'm fucking nuts. And I'm living a life, you know? I'm going for it. I got a whole bunch of shit in front of me. It's hot as fuck in my fucking room. Blah, 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 bloom. Everybody shroom. Scoop July 4th. What does July 4th mean to you? To me, it means one time I went home for July 4th, and I was the only kid that showed up, and I just had a nice barbecue with just me and my parents. <laughs> and we just sat there, and we were like, whew. And then we were like, whew. And we were like, Bleh. And we had nothing really to say, and that's it. My parents don't know shit about me. They know shit about my life. They don't know that I would drink all the time, that I dance. They know how many people I fuck. As, as, as far as they can tell, I haven't had a relationship in like five years. I've just been out fucking. And that's all I do is go out fucking. Just straight fucking. I mean, just in the last year, I've been fucking. You don't even know. I've had all these fake relationships in the last year. And I guess I've hurt some people in the last year. At least one person. I was so used to having these non-relationships come and go where, like, people don't have emotions that I forget that people have emotions sometimes. And I've had emotions. And it's so sad when you have emotions. But start going on too many non-relationships. 
Like the, the Pinto, the Shinto, and the Santa Maria. What were the ships that fucking Columbus sailed over here before he slaughtered all the Native Americans with smallpox and guns? The Pinto, the Santa Maria. Was it the Pinto? That's it Beans? Was it the Santa Clara? I don't know what the name of the fucking... I don't have time to look this up. Right now, I'm just looking at stats for the podcast. Look at this. As of right now, past 24 hours, 44 downloads. Whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. 44 downloads in 24 hours. That's more than one download an hour. The Pinto, the Canto, and the Santa Maranco. Those are the names of all the ships Colombo came on. <laughs> Good old relationships. Relationships is what I call them. I've had so many non-relationships. I've had many relationships that weren't relationships where I've came inside the girl. We weren't together, and I've spread my jism into their pussum making the opportunity for them to get pregnant even though we weren't dating I just came inside them because I don't give a fuck I've done this many times in this non-relationship history just going raw at it because I don't give a fuck I mean I do give a fuck I don't know at what point I'm going to have a real relationship maybe once I meet the right one but you know there's just no right one you just keep going and going and fucking flowing I don't know I gotta fucking... I'm still a fucking fuck. I'm still a fucking fuck. I've just, it's just been Tinder. That's what it is. Just been using Tinder. I don't even meet girls at bars or whatever. Or in like social circles. I just find them on Tinder. And then we meet up and we, we talk about the same fucking shit every time. They're like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I fucking jump into hoops and attach myself to staircases. And I'm just fucking... This, is, this riffing is on top of this world. <laughs> I had some topics to talk about, but I don't even like my fucking topics. Topics about relationships. Relationships and shit. Fucking. One time I was, uh, I was masturbating at work with my laptop in the bathroom. And I didn't think anyone was going to be there. I don't even know what prompted this story. And I came out of the bathroom with my laptop. And one of the interns was just sitting there. But he didn't look back. And then, like, I just went into the room. And uh, he didn't see me jerking off. I used to film myself jerking off at one of my jobs. And then, like, and then, like, kind of mentally hope that they'd catch me by, like, me not deleting footage and be like, whose dick is on this camera? <laughs> I'm just a fucking crazy person right now just fucking looking at Tinder. God, everything is nuts. Everyone is nuts. Everything is nuts. The world is nuts. Who are you going to vote for president? Are you a member of the Yang Gang? Or the Warren Torin? Or the Master Blaster Blaster? I'm going to run for president. And what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, fucking no more student loans. Everyone gets free money. And you're allowed to be naked on Wednesdays. And that's, I think that's my platform right now. That's my platform right now. And that's the best it could be. <laughs> it's good just to pause and think about things. In college, I had to write a, a screenplay once, and I wrote a screenplay about a school shooting, which is a very trademark move of someone who's a school shooter. And then, like, I got a pretty good grade on it, and I put it in, like, a binder and shit. And I remember I brought it to, like, my first, like, interview for my first job and I was like good I wrote a whole screenplay about a school shooting and they're like oh okay <laughs> and <laughs> just a fucking nutcase I wrote down as things I wanted to talk about was explain my first two relationships <laughs> what do I have to explain what haven't I already told you what haven't I already told you did I ever tell you this story that like uh like a like it was like a one year anniversary of like my my first relationship and like like some like we were at a, a Celtics game and some guy dropped a beer on my girlfriend at the time and then I just went around I was like you go to apologize and he was like eh. and then we went back and I was like we were in the shower having sex and like I pulled out and I just like kind of we were gonna move the sex to the bedroom but I just kind of came right there and then she jumped on top of me to kind of try to continue the sex and then. I was like, I'm not feeling it. And then the next day, we, were, we went to, like, a legal seafood. And I was like, this is too much money for my fucking money. 
<laughs> so then we went to just some market. She was pissed at me that we didn't go to legal seafood. And then, like, she, like, didn't talk to me for, like, a week or whatever. She was all mad at me that we didn't go. So the point of this story is if it's your one-year anniversary, you should really hawk up the cash to go to legal seafood. That's a fun thing. That's a fun little fact. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. That was a part of the relationship. Uh, on my first relationship, I remember our first, I mean, my second long-term relationship. Our first date, I think, was at a bowling alley, and I showed up late. Yeah, this was during the Celtics playoffs when they had, like, Rondo and Pierce and Garnett. This was post-college. And then the second time we went out, like, we went to some, like, I had, like, these free tickets to this wine tasting. So we did the wine tasting, and then we went to the beach. That was quite the time. Wow, I was real romantic then. Now all my dates are fucking just going to the bars. Now it's just like constantly you meet someone, you go to the bar, you meet, go to the bar, whatever, whatever, you see a movie, whatever, you fuck, and then whatever, whatever, and it's over. And there's no God anymore, you know? There's zero God. Now I'm just trying to think of what clip I'm going to put on YouTube. I'm trying to say something that's like a minute long just so I can put it not on YouTube, on Instagram, and then you listen to it and you're like, oh my God, his life is like a thing and my thing is like a life. One of these notes I wrote was gal there. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm the number one podcaster on the planet, okay? People love my opinions on things. People listen. You know what people listen to this? 44 downloads in the last 24 hours. That's more than 82 downloads in the last 56 hours. None of these numbers mean anything to me. Uh, I think I've already talked about my first blowy. And then my first sexy, sexy time with a sex sex. Uh, Only had anal twice, if you're asking how many times, with the same gal. Second time condomless, how fun is that? Coming at you hard. I go from zero to hero on this shit. <laughs> My fucking talkings. God, I'm so terrible with remembering birthdays and important things with people. I'm like a fucking sociopath with things. You know what I mean? I wish I was just better with being emotionally connected to people. I like to be alone. I like to draw the number seven on everything I'm writing. Okay, this is what I wrote down. CCD. It's talking about God with a gal, you know. I don't know if you believe in God. One time, uh, you know what CCD is? CCD, we used to call it Central City Dump. It was like a religious class. One time I went there. This is my, my biggest story from CCD is one time I was going there and my mom was dropping me off and I started opening the door before she stopped the car. And she's like, you can't fucking open the door before you stop the car. And she got the angriest I've seen up until that point because I opened the door. That's my biggest memory. One time in CCD, like, I had been, like, fucking shitting like crazy. And this is, I was older, and I wore a diaper. And, like, we were getting, like, our first communion, and I was wearing a diaper under my freaking pants because I was a poo-poo pants man. And uh, my friend Mike at the time sort of noticed through my pants that I had this bulging, like, diaper, and he, like, poked it and laughed at me. I'm like, shut up, Mike, you jerk. But, you know, I was just fucking, I don't even, I can't remember how that happened. Or why, I don't know how old you are then, but it wasn't a time I should have been wearing a diaper. But I had been like, I had fucking, I was shitting like crazy. I don't know why that was happening. But in the presence of God, I made sure there was no poo coming out of my pants, you know. I'm just a man of the religion. (laughs) Shit, I remember wearing the diaper, but I don't know how I got to that point. That's so weird. Fucking God. You know, I don't believe in aliens either. I do not believe in aliens. People think that's selfish. But I just think just the opposite. I just think the idea of life existing is just like a miracle. It, like it only happens once. That like I think every sort of way of living is what's going on. Like there's ants and dogs and spiders and people. And like there's only one creature as smart as us. Like we hit that and whatever. That like every form of life already exists like every possible way of fucking moving around and tickling exists so that's why i don't think aliens exist because i think they're all already here on earth like for like life is like one of a million variables variables and this happens to be it and then there's all the other variables that aren't life that exist out in space does that make sense is that crazy thing i mean if i'm wrong then i'm wrong and it's just like whatever Uh, i also fuck i'm burping like a fuck face Uh. 
I also don't believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. Um, I do not think ghosts are real. I think ghosts are all made up, and I think uh, fucking like zodiac signs are dumb. And fucking, I went by a place that was doing a tarot reading, and uh, there was this lady crying, and whoever was giving it was like making them cry. I'm like, what kind of bullshit are they spewing to make this fucking lady cry? Why do fucking, I mean, not to be uh, sexist, but women believe in that more heebie jeebie shit more than men, you know? They're sitting around like, oh, I'm a fucking Gemini and you're a fucking pick a tie? A pick a tie? That means we're, when we get together, we're gonna scrub the floors and do bananas to them. I kinda wanna just do the next three minutes of made up language because made up language is every language. So I'd really just be doing justice to humanity. If I just sing everything... God, I'm talking to myself so much. Okay, so I used to work at Stop and Shop. This was a note I want to talk about. Stop and Shop, which is a grocery store. It was my first job. I don't know how much Stop and Shop talk I've done, so I'm I'm in it right now talking about my first job. My first job. And um, I used to work at... Ooh, that reminds me of another thing. And I remember when I was getting the interview, it was like this big fat lady, and she was eating salad. Like She couldn't even stop eating during the interview. To be like, well, oh, your brother used to work here. So I ended up working the front end, the cashier. That was good. I made friends there. And, uh, yeah, and, that, and then the fucking one of the uh, my co-worker gals, who may or may not listen to this, so that'd be fun, asked me out to prom. You know, I didn't even go to my own prom. I went to the prom the next year with one of my co-worker gals, and we got our pictures together. And I've never actually seen the pictures. I bought the pictures, and I've never actually seen them. And that's fine. I don't really need to see them. That's funny because I was a total, like, fucking nervous Nellies, like, loner, scared kid in high school. I was, I was funny. I'm a funny fuck. I've always been a funny fuck. And, like, I remember when we were getting, like, our pictures taken in front of the house. And I had, like, my arm around her. But I was just seemed weird because I was like, oh, it's a girl. And they're like, could you just act like you guys like each other? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't know how to be. The whole thing. And then that night, I drank a bunch of, like, rum and Dr. Pepper. And I puked in this girl's house and went to bed. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then after that, like, we didn't really talk that much after that. That was the end of that. That's funny. That's funny that that's what's happened. And then, I don't know if I talked about this. Then Okay, so I was going to talk about embarrassing stuff with gals and then the next gal I dated which was in college well I didn't so I didn't date the first gal but the next gal she liked me and I was too afraid to make a move because I didn't know what to do and like yeah one time she slipped over and put like her hand on my dick by accident and like she like freaked out and I'm like oh look at this but I still never made a move to kiss her and then like she was like all right I'm done with this guy this guy's not making any moves so, yeah, so then that ended for a while, and I was sad. I was listening to, what was I listening to, the Slipknot song, this Vermilion Part 2, classic hit. I listened to that a bunch, and I just walked around school all sad. Like, this isn't working, but, like, she was still, like, a friend in the friend group, so I saw her, and I would stare at her and be a fucking weirdo. And then, like, I started working out with my buddy, you know, getting ripped. And then eventually, we, things came around, and we started making out and whatever. Like, I remember one night... Where, like, she was just, like, writing her signature in one of my notebooks, like, over and over again. And I just leaned in and gave her a smooch, some terrible kissing or whatever. And then we would spend the rest of that semester just having smooch fest. It was such a fun time, you know, just having smooch fest. And then the summer came, and then that ended. And then we ended up getting back together the next year. Yeah. And now just think of this. Tons of girls later, here I am today. Master of love. And we all start out in very weird places. Now I'm a master of love. Now I'm going out, fucking a new girl every three months, you know? Getting emotionless relationships, you know? Living that wild life, you know? Like an animal. Uncaring, unemotion. Not even fucking, fucking, I'm a cold, hard dick guy. Speaking of which, I've been having trouble getting boners again. If you've been keeping track of my life, I've been having trouble getting boners again. I gotta keep working out. I can barely stay hard anymore. I think my body's like, you can't just keep fucking around. You gotta find someone and stay with them. But I'm the player, and the player's gonna play all the time. (laughs) 
it's good to like just fill up the podcast with noises, you know? It's good to fill up with noises because like actual good info. I voted for Obama. Okay, there's some info for you. You know what? I didn't I didn't vote for Donald Trump in the last election. Uh-uh, I'm not a fan. My mom did. My dad did. Did I tell you my mom used to have like a poster in the kitchen, not a poster, a painting of Obama stomping on the Constitution? But <laughs> she's taken it down since. But she's a big Trumper. She loves Trumpity Dumpity Doo more than Trampity Tampity Too. Which is a set of words I am putting together. Religion. Used to celebrate Hanukkah growing up. Used to do a little Baruch Atal Hanya coming at you. That was a fun time, Hanukkah. Huh. This just reminded me I was talking about like one of the first times I got really drunk at like a friend's party. I used to have parties in a cabin. And then the next day we went out to like eat at a restaurant. I just didn't want to eat anything because I was sick from drinking too much. And I was just, I don't even remember what I got. Maybe like, fuck, it was like, it was an Italian place. So probably a pasta get up. And I was barely eating anything and squishing around the plate. And then I'd have to stop the middle of dinner to go to the bathroom just to puke. But I didn't want my parents to know I was drinking the night before. And I remember my mom kept pushing this beer she had on me. She's like, oh, Matt, you've never really had a beer. You want this one? And I'm like, no, I don't want to drink. And then this, this girl pointed out she probably knew I had, like, drank the night before. My mom was just fucking with me. Because there was another time I came home, like, super high. And my mom used to make dolls, like, creepy-ass dolls. She's, there's, like, one room we have of, like, 100 homemade dolls. Like, we're all plucked in hair and, like, the same weight as babies and whatever. But one time we came home and she had a new doll just sitting in, like, the corner of her room. And I was super high. And she's like, hey, Matt, why don't you go pick it up? And then, like, I just picked it up. I'm like, oh, yeah. She's like, okay, how's that feel? Like, it feels like a fucking doll. But she was just fucking with me because she was high and she just wanted to make me... No, she was high. I was high and she just wanted to make me do things, which is something this gal pointed out. And I'm like, shit, she did know I was under the influence of all these things. But yeah, my mom would make fucking dolls. I don't know if I ever talked about this. It would be like on the kitchen table, there would just be like a one single doll head, you know, with, with a select amount of hairs poking out of it. <laughs> so at nighttime, you'd be like, oh, doll heads. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucking all over the place. Yeah. I just get to I just get to bring you random memories from the ether from the ether of my mind singing songs to you is fun to do with everyone. One time in uh elementary school we were like we were each given like caterpillars to raise which was fun and we raised the caterpillar and then it goes into a chrysalis and then like we're supposed to bring the chrysalis outside so it become like a butterfly when it was ready and like i remember i was bringing my chrysalis and i dropped on the ground and it bled everywhere so i never got a chance to like have it turn into a butterfly so that's what i learned about killing your pets since then i've had lots of dead pets <laughs> Yeah, my mom's going to get, like, a teacup schnauzer because her last dog died. Uh, oh, fuck, I'm burping like a fuck face. Tastes like booze. Um, she's getting a teacup schnauzer. Emma, Emma was a great dog before. I remember when we got Emma as a puppy. It was right when that song, Wake Me Up When September Ends, was big. My favorite Green Day song. It's so good. I fucking don't like Green Day, but I love that song. And... That's it. She's getting a little teacup schnauzer. I was thinking I've never had like a real conversation with my dad. I don't know what he likes. He'll drive around in silence. I don't know. I don't even know what to begin to talk to him. I want to ask him what he, how he feels in life about things. But he'll just talk about movies and shit. God, I'm really all over the place here. I'm trying to fill it with probably the best information you ever got. What's going on in the world? Iran? Something's happening in Iran. I think we should all get along, you know? Gay pride is happening. I spread my opinion on pride before, right? I think we should have no pride. I think we're all just people. We really shouldn't care about our heritages or our sexual orientations, skin color, race is made up. We're all just people. We should all just love each other and fuck each other till we die. Is what I'm saying. Is what I'm saying. Have I talked about the first time I raw dogged? <laughs> is my real question. 
Have I talked about the first time I raw dog? That's a pretty good title. It might be too long. I might just call it raw dogged. I don't know if that's even strong. I'm sure there's something else I What else is I saying this? I know I'm talking to my fucking self. But what else have I said in this bullshit? Raw dog. First time I raw dogged, I was it was a uh, we were in a fight. This was in college. And then like we are made up and it was like the common area and like she was on top and then we just we just like fucked on the floor behind a couch and anyone could have walked by. I remember people were actually in the room over were walking to the bathroom as we were just fucking and people were walking by and we were just fucking do do do. And I can't remember, but I think I did come inside of her. No, I had to have pulled out, right? Dude, I don't even remember. Did I pull out or not? Did I come in her the first time we raw dogged? I remember there was another time later down the line when we were fucking in the pool. Like, uh, raw? Like, I'm like crazy OCD, so let me backtrack there. Like, I remember I kissed her pussy underwater, and like, I, I didn't know how to ask her to kiss my dick underwater, but like, I was just like OCD about the same thing happening to each other. I'm like, well, I kissed her pussy, you should kiss my dick. And she never kissed my dick, and I thought about that for a while. But anyhow, she never kissed my dick. That might be a good title. That would probably pop. She never kissed my dick. I don't even know. I'm writing on this piece of paper. She Wait, I should write it on this thing. This is the show notes. Anyhow, we were, we were raw dogging in the pool, and this was like when she was like, her birth control were all fucked up, and I'm like, can I come inside of you? And she's like, no. She never kissed my dick. Nah, that's too long. And then like we we moved, like cause, but we didn't, I didn't finish. And then we moved to our pool house. <coughs> well, while we were in the pool, I remember I looked up, at the like the, my house, the windows, and my mom was watching us fuck. <laughs> well, she had a little glance at the blinds, and I was like, "Hey," and she was like, mm, and she didn't acknowledge it. But then we went to the pool house, and like we started fucking raw, and then we stopped because I was scared, and then she was like pissed at me for a while that I didn't come, and I'm like, I don't want to get you fucking pregnant. I don't know what to tell you. Since then, I just fucking been coming in shakes like fucking. I got nothing to worry about. Just throw a kid at me, you know. My life couldn't get any more crazy. I'm just here hanging. She got fucking. I wrote down another note of something else I wanted to talk about. That's a nice fucking. I'm fucking hanging out, fucking doing drugs, fucking living life. I did a little cocaine the other day. Fuck cocaine, you know. People like cocaine. It's just a thing. I'm just kidding. I never did cocaine just for any future employers. But no, I did do it. And we went out and I was super drunk and it was really a waste. We just walked around. I'd like to do crack. I hear crack's fun. I was reading in a magazine once that crack is a grand old time. A little crack cocaine. Put it in my brain. Go insane. Living life on the lane. Everybody knows my crack cocaine is going to enter my brain and make me insane. Walking down the lane playing Jane Tame. Everybody. But yeah, I mean, the other time I did crack cocaine, things kind of got a little out of control. No one ever talks about the hangover of crack, the the depletion of good chemicals inside of you. I don't even want to begin to talk about cocaine. <coughs> Maybe I gotta go see another uh, fucking therapist or get an antidepressants because I've been a fucking nutcase lately. And I don't know what to do. You know, I feel so empty. All I'm doing is trying to make content for Instagram and the web. And I'm making these fucking podcasts where I just rush speak through whatever random shit. And then maybe somebody listens this far. Please listen this far. And then maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. I don't even... I could, to be honest, I don't even know what I talked about during this episode. I think most of this episode was spent talking in fucking circles, thinking about what to fucking talk about. But, yeah, no, I've been feeling empty, having a bunch of empty relationships and nothing meaningful, and I've been trying to make people laugh and do comedy and make sketches, and that's really the only thing bringing me kind of joy, but even that's kind of fleeting because we're all going to die someday and there's no God. So basically what I'm saying is there's no God is going to be the title. There's no God because that's popping, hip-hopping, and uh, I think... Everyone's trying to get control of reality and God is just control. Like when a hurricane comes into your village and kills half the people, you say it was God's plan to validate it. But no, really, the world's a harsh, rough place where people just die and get murdered and killed. And that's just how it is. And you can't control anything. And all you can do is just try your best to live. So don't worry about a thing. Every little thing's going to be all right. Robert Marles. Was the quote. He was a dog. Marley and me. 
So, I've done fucking 31 and a half minutes. I've raced through that. Hopefully some of that was enjoyable. I enjoyed doing it. I always love doing this shit. So make sure to follow me uh, on Instagram, at Matt Miller Real. My shit's blowing up. I got some new sketches coming at ya. Also, uh, like me on Facebook. Uh, fuck Facebook. Uh, also, fuck Twitter, but Matt Miller Real on Twitter. Matt Miller Comedy on YouTube. I'm fucking, I'm putting vlogs up. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed all that bullshit. There's no God. <laughs> uh, that's been Militant Affection. Thank you. Uh, bye. Militant Affection.